See that guy there? He's looking for love. And it just so happens that the other one, oh, well, she was up in this tree somewhere. Not sure. You guys are putting up with Woodpecker Awareness Day. <laughs> There. Here she is. She went around. She's up there. Hard to tell what's going on with this camera. Well, there she goes. Anyhow. I think the scene is too backlit for this camera right now. I'm gonna get away from the road. It's a little noisy, but anyhow, just a cute little mother nature thing going on. It's been at it for a week now, so fun times. Okay, well, another, another busy day here. Zeus with me, somewhere back there. I don't know. So, we've got, um, had a really busy weekend. Um, the uh, White Horse Tulsa left, and we have a replacement for her. Tulsa did pretty good, actually. I didn't get a lot of video in the end of all the groundwork, but I mean, you guys have seen, if you follow this channel, you've seen all the groundwork that happens. Just piles of that, she did really, really well in the end. In the beginning she was pretty... Oh, he changed posts. Um, so here we got our new guy and that's a Palomino butt. Really really nice horsey. You'll see more of him pretty soon. Um, really nice guy just needs a little bit of um, practice. So he's here for practice. There's baby. <laughs> Baby's having a rest and eating. Very efficient baby. Ah, she's doing really well. Um, but on a side note, she'll be leaving here either the end of the month or middle of uh, next month. Her owner has decided to sell her. So. No more baby horse here, or at least not her. Everybody else is doing well. Morning checks already done. Food is done, all that kind of stuff. I wanted to show you guys something while I head down here, down our pathway. Lots of work that got done over the weekend. Horses coming and going. Um, way at the back there, I'm gonna show you guys in a second. After, one other thing, and I don't know if this topic is getting boring yet for some of you. I know that there are some that just really like it because they have their own, you guys have your own dream of having your own place and managing your own stuff and building your own things, and I think that's great, so. <clears throat> Part of uh, some of these videos that I'll do will be to talk about See this guy he follows me everywhere Zeus What's happening man? <laughs> no kidding. I mean he comes down here every time Okay, so paddock maintenance. I mean it is So important to make sure that things are maintained. We redid these paddocks back here as you can see they look kind of fresh and clean and uh, hi, buddy. How are you doing, oh, Mr. Softy Pants? Um, this paddock got done mostly. There's just a little bit left on that outer edge uh, to sort of take care of. You can see, I don't know if you can see, it's hard to tell on the camera, but there is a very uh, slight grade going that way. That goes down over there. There's a little bit of a hump in the middle because this side's a little low because it needed the most work because this is where our horses hang out like this guy um, because the draw is always that way so when we're managing horses and boarding horses and training horses and working with horses and riding horses we're always wondering where's the draw and where's the pressure now 
the pressure will kind of be out there. No horses out there. There's maybe some funny noises, especially if it's windy or whatever, and things are creaking and cracking. Hi. I know. Are you bored? Maybe a little. Um, and so the draw is going to be that way. I've just noticed, look at this fence board. It's getting worse. Thanks a lot, Lena. See, she gets a little bit bored and agitated. And this board is, I'll talk about um, that another time. That is also part of paddock maintenance. And I will just give a real quick tip for things like this. Um, if you get some wood preservative, the copper naphthenate, I think it's called. It's the same stuff they sometimes sell as, as a thrush remedy. Uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I would never use it on thrush, but um, it's effective because it just kills everything, uh, everything. And uh, I mean, the, you, you wear, you wear gloves when you use it for a reason. So anyways, if you put it on uh, the boards, the horses will take one sniff and they'll just walk away. And so I think I'm going to do that today. But the other thing about this, again, once this thing has been fixed, which it has been, and I've explained it before, these mats here um, help this area get tamped down because he walks back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And so I don't have to roll that part. I rolled this part over here. Um, He's not a very active horse, which is nice. So he just kind of comes along and steps on it. But part of the maintenance, uh, actually, I mean, there's a better example, is she'll lay down here. And so it's it's got some divots, and maybe the lighting doesn't quite show that, but you can see here, it's quite bumpy and stuff. So after, um, after everything's cleaned up, uh, I'll usually come in with a rake, on a fresh paddock, you come in with, here, I don't know, I was pointing at it, but you know, a big um, a landscaping rake, or even a small rake, or even just the uh, rake that you use to clean up manure. And I'll just flatten this out again. Um, because if you end up leaving these potholes, essentially, and they start to fill up with water, and water sort of gets in, uh, water is the killer of all paddock footing, and paddocks and footing, and arenas, and whatever, trails. Uh, driveways, if you get a pothole, fill it in, so otherwise it'll just get worse and worse and worse. So anyways, Lena has an itchy head. Oh, she stopped. Hi. Come say hello to everybody, Lena. Hey. Uh, okay, how about that? She's not a big fan of dogs. Oh, now you're in the way. Hi, big girl. Oh. oh, oh, that's it, she says, that's it. Another year scratchings. Uh, this is hard to do with one hand. Ah, okay, I'll get to this in a bit. Needy horses. See? <laughs> she says, how about the other one? Oh, okay. It's an ear scratching video now. This isn't about paddock maintenance or woodpeckers. Always put the ear down so that the stuff falls out, not in. Look, see, there's stuff in there. She loves this. I don't even know if it's in focus, I hope it is. But, uh, oh, she says that's not it. I really get in there. And see, she'll put her own head down this way, hopefully getting more scratches, I guess. But you want stuff to fall down onto the ground, not down into the ear. Okay, you're good. Hey, okay. everybody's shedding. A lot of hair all over the place. So, <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, so paddock maintenance, I, I might be covering it a lot. It might be boring to some, but um, it is really, really important to maintain, uh, a, especially a newer, new footing uh, paddock because it gets moved around and crunched up so much so we'll just continuously flatten it and flatten it and sooner or later it'll just stay flat mostly um, better than this so anyways all right well i think that covers that oh and yes look back here so we were very busy a couple weekends ago um one of the dreams of this place has always been to well should we take a walk um, to build out a trail 
that uh, that it goes far back. It's kind of muddy back here. I'm only wearing my shoes at the moment. But uh, kind of cleared through here and around. And I think we got about a quarter of the way of what's left of this whole place. And uh, come around and essentially, essentially, the idea is that it'll be possible to um, do training for trail riding. So we'll be able to make our own custom trails, something with a log, something with a waterway, something, you know, all the kinds of things, a bridge, uh, things that, that horses can have trouble with. Not meaning that they will, but they can. And so we'll just keep working them through that, different directions, um, and all kinds of obstacles. And then also it might just be a nice little trail ride because we've got a couple acres going back that way still. And uh, so that's what we're trying to get started on. Making trails is a big deal. It's hard. That's why every, I think every trail riding video I put out, I always say that it's just great what people have done, what people have done. The people that have built the trails and maintained the trails, how much they've done. It's just really amazing. So very thankful for that. Okay, well, let's end that for now. I'll see if I come back. I've got some work to do with the big guy came in and uh, a little bit of maintenance here and there to keep up on probably work with Luke or Lena today actually as well I got to get on with my own horses so see you guys again soon well just finished uh... <laughs> I forgot to give you guys a quick update in the in the morning portion of my day on baby's um, Hey bag situation. She's doing really well. Um, hi baby. So for anybody that ends up buying this uh, this girl in the future, little documentation purposes, um, she's doing ooh, fuzzy finger. She's doing great with the purple one, no problems whatsoever. And the green one has got to be. I don't know when did I last do this. Probably. four or five days ago but she's finished half of that bag because as she finishes her purple ones I sort of leave her for a little bit so she pecks away at it doing great amazing horses are so smart uh, anyhow so quick update on that uh, idea that I've been putting out on how to acclimate horses to hay bags um, she's doing great let's formally meet this guy because I've just been finished doing uh, some training the saddle and my camera uh, rig for my GoPro so I can get the view up a little higher than um, than, than down down here it comes up high. It just looks better. I'll put in a few clips uh, of what we did. I did a full training session uh, for the owner so she can see uh, what I'm doing because most people can't be around for the right timing of work, <laughs> working with everybody wants to play. So definitely gonna be playtime soon. Um, I've forgotten the halter. I'm gonna bring him in, let him have a roll and a rest, and of course he's just hanging around with the Lena at the back. Our resident girl. I have a halter. Oh, Rosalie's here. Anyhow, so. I'll show you Romeo in a second. So this is Romeo. <laughs> Got him out here uh, eating a little grass with me. And uh, he had a great, great little ride. So I'll show some highlights of that. Um, he's... Uh, just a nice horse, just really nice. I mean, they're all nice, but he's a uh, really sound mind, sound body. Uh, you know. So, whatever that's worth, but here he is. This is our newest addition. He'll be here for just a couple weeks. And uh, come on back. There. I think we've talked about it before when it comes to grazing and, um, and hanging out. Uh, there's a particular radius that I would accept him to be in. 
um, not, to, not to pull on the line, so hopefully he stays close. So, anyways, we're doing that. There you go. Beautiful horse. Okay, we'll see you guys again soon. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. Till next time. Okay, so uh, you're correct. When this guy has uh, the idea to go, he'd like to get going and go somewhere. So the first thing I'm going to work on, um, at least my head says, the first thing that I need to work on is getting him to where he uh, goes at the pace that I would like him to go at. We might want a brisk walk where we get going, or we might want something that's just really slow. So I'm going to work at timing his feet. Um, to where I can get him to move at a particular pace and stay at that pace and not go rushing along or do anything silly. So there'll be a lot of correcting and a lot of requesting and a lot of encouragement at the same time. And uh, I can't help but wonder what the camera view looks like. But Okay, so we'll back up. Everything, every movement in my mind for a horse that's very forward, every movement must start with a backup. See, he resists it with his head up his head comes up, so he's, so that's not what I'm, I'm thinking. So I'll bring my hands down low. I'm gonna start with my legs coming in forward. Typical Western style, I, I suppose it would be called uh, riding. And I'm going to ask for a backup and a turn. Okay, another item I'm having a problem with that I don't like personally is his bend on his turns is very uh, resistant, I guess. There's there's too much weight uh, in the rain for me. Ideally, I'd like to be able to just do everything with just a couple of fingers. I want to be able to just, I mean, this is about as much as I should have to do, and it should be just like that, see? So, I like that. I don't know if you can see that. Like that. So, the suppling at a standstill seems to have been done, but when he goes to walk, which means at a trot and a canter, it won't happen either. When he goes to walk, at least in my opinion, when he goes to walk, he won't um, he won't bend just right for me. I'd, I'd like a nice curve about him. Now, I don't know if there's anything going on with his body that sort of limits him to do that, but we're definitely gonna practice that because each movement of my hands, currently, I'm gonna work with my legs too, uh, each movement on my hands should accordingly have a reaction in his body and in such a case when I reach outwards It's the front end If I were to reach backwards, it's the back end. He's pretty ready at a, at a, I'm very happy and proud of him for this. I mean, he's responding really well um, But each movement should Should get one of the corners or one of the ends or some mixture of that so we're going to keep practicing turns and backing up with my feet. I'm going to ask with my feet. He says, I don't know. There. Oh, his head went down. That's good. There. Get a little more. There. A little more. There. So a lot of that. Good head position. I feel like he's listening, his ears are towards me. Pretty relaxed. This would be a very successful ride. Come, let's go. Here. See, he went right, I decided to go left. My right leg is moving. Now we're forward.
just practicing our moseying. <laughs> okay. We'll drink there. So I'm not going to drink. 